General Services Committee meeting uh, together October the 24th, 2016 at 12 o'clock. We have three items on the agenda. The first one we're going to do is a uh, police vehicle purchase. Uh, Chief White. Well, good afternoon, everybody. The first item, uh, what we're requesting, is authorization to purchase six patrol vehicles. In our current patrol fleet of our size, uh, the general replacement cycle is five vehicles per year. Now, we haven't always met that, and immediately we have a total of nine vehicles that need to be replaced. Six of them need to go right now. They are in very, very poor shape. As you're aware, through our budget process, there is no budgeted funds for these patrol vehicles. However, knowing this would be the case, um, we've been planning for this for several months. Um, the police department in last year's budget cycle saved uh, a lot more than the $374,148 that it would cost to purchase and upfit those patrol vehicles. Now, you may be asking, why didn't we purchase these in last year's budget cycle? Well, frankly, the reason is the, <laughs> the timing is kind of weird on these. For police vehicles, Ford and Chevy and everybody else only makes them for another a number of months. They represent a very small amount of the total number of vehicles that Ford and Chevy and everybody else makes. So they only open the bids um, generally uh, in the October time frame every year, and they're open for purchasing for just a couple months, and then it shuts down. Where you place your order depends on how quickly you get your patrol vehicles. Even placing your order after our next council meeting, um, we probably won't take possession of the cars until probably January or February. And after that, it'll take a month or two to get them outfitted, so these patrol vehicles really won't be hitting the streets until uh, late spring, early summer of next year. Um, knowing that, we couldn't purchase the vehicles last year when we had the budget savings to make, uh, yeah, the budget savings to, um, to purchase the cars because you need to purchase and receive those items during the fiscal year in order for them to count during that fiscal year. Even if we were to, to order the vehicles back in August or September or something like that, which as it turns out we couldn't because Ford and Chevy hadn't opened it, um, we wouldn't have taken receipt of the items until this current budget year, so we needed to carry the funds over. Knowing that, like I said, through this last budget process, we saved adequate funds in our budget to pay for this. My initial budget savings throughout the year was $732,320, is what we saved during the last budget cycle. When you take out the COPS grants and things of that nature, we saved in excess of uh, $452,000, which is, um, like I said, more than enough to pay for the six patrol vehicles that I'm requesting here today. And discussion. Just one question then. What do you do with the um, patrol vehicles that you have now? Are they surplus or used somewhere else or what? No, ma'am. The ones that we are um, getting rid of, they're, they're basically worthless. They cost more to maintain than they do to uh, – they're just um, – they're kind of a – uh, money drain for us right now. So those patrol vehicles, I think three or four of them are our current school resource officer vehicles, which were hand-me-downs from patrol, hand-me-downs to detectives, and then we put lights back on them and gave them to SROs. They're um, largely worthless. So At some point, those will be surplus. I'm sorry. Okay. We need to wait until we receive these, so you're probably not going to see that staff report so you transition before that you until the spring or summer. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We did a similar one this last year. I believe it was March or April to get rid of some cars that had, uh, you know, kind of left our fleet after the new ones came in. Okay. Any other discussion? No. Do you need a motion? I move that we uh, authorize the purchase of six patrol vehicles as described in Chief White's report. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Item number two, request, request to apply for 2016 Edward Byrne Justice Assistance Grant. Okay. Every year the uh, Justice Assistant Grant comes open, and it's a very short time window that we have to put in for this grant, uh, apply for it, um, and then accept it. Uh, last year we purchased a piece of equipment, if you remember, that allowed us to do some crime scene mapping. It was a piece of equipment that we could bring into a room or out to a street or what have you that would quickly map a crime scene. And it's a very expensive piece of equipment. And without that grant, we would not be able to purchase that piece of equipment. This is very similar. What we're requesting this year is the same thing that we um, 
be allowed to apply for and uh, except if granted a total of $41,075 from the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Grant. The piece of equipment that we'd be looking to purchase is called a Cellbright. What that means is that after a crime scene and after you've got a warrant from a judge, a signed warrant from a judge, if you have a cell phone, a tablet, something like that, this piece of equipment allows you to look at what's on there. Um, I've used it in the past um, on homicide cases, missing persons cases, drive-by shootings, ag assaults, some very, very big drug cases, um, things of that nature. And so really the process is you get a warrant from a judge. The judge allows you to look at the technology. This piece of equipment allows you to see what's on that piece of technology and not do as much analysis as needed as with some other types of uh, programs that are out there. It's a very useful piece of technology. But like I said, I've used it in, in um, numerous, numerous cases in the past, um, and it's very, very, uh, it's very useful to us. So really what I'm asking for is permission to apply for and accept if granted a total of $41,075 from the uh, Edward Byrne JAG grant. And city city doesn't have to have any any match of it. No, sir. There's no matching funds. This would be we would get the amount from uh, the JAG grant that would pay for this item. So really, we're just kind of a pass through. Ultimately, we would retain the piece of equipment. Um, I'll tell you the uh, part of the reason the way we apply for this is also uh, our ability to help other agencies. We're going to be the only agency around that, that like the Ferro equipment that we purchased last year um, using the same grant. Um, we would be able to assist other agencies. So if they have a, a major homicide case or a missing persons case or something like that, where we might be able to utilize this technology to help locate or help further the investigation, we'd be able to help assist those other agencies. Okay. Any questions? Just go ahead. Go ahead. So this is one piece of equipment, or is it software that's loaded onto? No, it's a device and software. It also comes with a three-year um, warranty, if you will, um, uh, some software updates, and also if anything goes wrong with it, they fix it. It also allows for some training of, I don't remember how many officers, so forgive me not to read it here, but I think it's three. Okay, so it's on one device. Yes, ma'am. Okay, it's a, so then we can... The device is about this big by this big, and you can. it comes with the different types of adapters. You can oh. adapt it to different, different devices, and then um, it downloads the information that gives it to us in a usable fashion. Okay. That, that was kind of my... Part of my question is, that what are the ongoing costs for something like this? But um, I'm sure there will be updates after that three-year period. Um, yeah, they're not incredibly expensive to the best of my recollection. Um, the ones... I used them in my previous life for years, probably the past eight or nine years, and I don't recall a great deal of updates. I think every year um, there was some some stuff that would allow us to access newer technology, you know, the newest iPhone, the newest whatever, that type of thing. But I don't remember being incredibly expensive. And like I said, this allows for three years' worth of those things within the grant. What um, My other question was, how does this company or this particular piece of equipment address cybersecurity issues with something like this? I mean, is there, are you putting any of your officers at risk by having a piece of equipment that can basically... No, not at all. It's not networked. The way it works is it's a standalone piece of equipment that you plug the device into. That way, if that piece of, that device were, you know, somehow corrupted or something like that, it wouldn't mess up our city networks and it wouldn't mess up the, you know, your own personal computer at your desk or something like that. It's a standalone piece of equipment that you plug the device into and then it gives you a reading of the information that's on there. And then it's, it's tied to, so that I have this right... And uh, there has to be a warrant issued for the particular person Absolutely. who owns whatever it is, so you can't just look right. at Right, this isn't like officers are walking down the streets and grabbing your cell phone and plugging it in just to see what you're, you know, looking out on the Internet or whatever and then giving it back to you. It doesn't right. work like that. You have to have a signed warrant from a judge indicating exactly what you're looking for and the reason you're looking for it, and the judge has to agree with that before you're even allowed to okay. get into the device and start searching it through using this technology. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Need a motion. I move for approval for the police department to apply for and accept if granted the 2016 Edward Byrne grant for the purchase of a regionally deployed Cellbrite complete mobile forensic suite for criminal investigations. Long one. <laughs> okay. Any more discussion? One, Go sorry, ahead. back ahead. page, one more question. So if we're using this and sharing this with other um, agencies, is there any reciprocity in upgrading and maintaining this if there's costs involved? 
You know, we really haven't addressed that. Um, as part of, as you know, we ha already have a memorandum of understanding with the other agencies. So if we have a critical incident, whether it's an officer involved shooting or some other really liability related type event um, we have an outside entity come and investigate that um, and usually what happens is I'm going to use the example of an officer ball shooting we use an officer we have an officer ball shooting the other agencies all come together and when he's part of this task force one agency is designated as the lead and the rest of them all play support roles um, whether we are the lead investigative agency or support role this type of technology will assist in, in the overall investigation part of that now as far as the the funding mechanism, that's certainly something we can explore um, uh, down the road. I will tell you that we are already assisting other agencies with pieces of their doing. Um, for instance, in the next couple months, you're going to have a item come before you where we are looking to allocate a number of uh, budget dollars towards our boss camera system, which Post Falls operates and all the rest of the agencies surrounding um, in the surrounding area put money towards. Um, so it could be very similar to that. The difference, I think, in that technology and this is that that BOSS system is extremely expensive, mm -hmm. and this, a uh, brand new one, is you know literally not that right. much. And the upgrades, frankly, as right. like I said, in my recall, my past life, they really weren't that expensive at all. Good. Okay. Thanks. Any more discussion? Nope. Okay. Need a motion. I uh, got the motion. Here's a second. Oh, okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, thanks, Chief. Thank you, sir. I'm glad you didn't make me repeat that motion. What's that? I'm glad you didn't make me repeat that motion. Yeah, good. <laughs> okay, uh, next thing and last is um, amended professional services agreement for city and county parking. Bill Greenwood, Park and Rec Director. Bill? Good afternoon. Um, you all approved the um, MOU with the county to move ahead with us moving forward with our shared parking agreement and some companion projects. Um, this is to enlist uh, the services of the company that worked on that plan for the county as well as the company that worked on our Four Corners Mullen realignment project. They're very familiar with it, so it makes uh, fiscal sense to have them go ahead and um, just move our existing contract with them or agreement that we have for the Mullen realignment just forward to extend it. Okay, any questions? I don't have any questions. Um, I only have a comment. I kind of feel like this isn't an item that should be on consent calendar, so I wanted to know what you guys thought about that. I know we approved an MOU on it, but it's a big deal and it's rather unusual um, as far as even it being in parks and a parking lot. So I'm wondering if maybe this should go to full council if we approve it here. We've done these sorts of agreements before where we extend them, but that's entirely up to this board. And maybe council can talk to that a little bit. Looks like Sam has some comments for us. Okay, Sam. Yeah, just for uh, just some thoughts, um, I do think this is probably a routine item. Um, it is simply acknowledging that Welchcomer will continue on doing this similar work in the same area that they've already been doing. Um, but when it comes down to it, it's always a purview of the council if you'd prefer to, to have this talked at full council. I think from staff's perspective, we do consider this routine. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's no additional funding related to this. It's just acknowledging that they'll continue to work with us. So the funding for the, the project itself um, for the shared parking is already part of the package. Um, this would include those companion projects that are going to come back to you at a later date. Uh, the park element, so to speak. So we're now going to be meeting this week with the um, the committee that uh, oversight on when we had the lease agreement with BLM that went forward. So um, it's your pleasure, whatever you choose to do. Yeah. Okay, ladies, what do you think? I'm comfortable with it being on a on the consent calendar. However, if it's you know, council's request, I'll support that as well. So I can to bring to full council. I'm okay either way, but I. Okay, let's take it to full council then. Okay, sounds good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, that's it. Is there anything else? Sam? No, sir. Randy? No. Okay. So take one more thing. So if we take it to full council, we're not going to take it with a recommendation? With no. Don't okay. It's either either one. I, um, I just, it's a pretty simple item, so it just feels like full council could go through it. Um, I think mostly for public information, bringing it to full council is important, so. Okay. So no recommendation is fine with me. Okay. Anything else? Okay. We're adjourned.